The Tower of London is one of the most infamous prisons and castles in the world. It has a rich history of execution, torture and brutality, being the site where three of England's queens would lose their heads. Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard and Lady Jane Grey all made the walk to Tower Green to meet their executioner, who would take off their head. It became a place where notorious criminals such as Guy Fawkes were tortured using devices such as the rack, which would inflict such pain onto a suspected criminal. But despite the fortress being almost a thousand years old in places, it was involved in taking lives in conflicts which changed the world forever. During both of the World Wars, the Tower of London was a place where executions occurred, and it was where a number of German spies would be shot in the firing range there. The final execution took place during the Second World War, with Joseph Jacobs being shot dead. But during the First World War, there were many other executions that took place, with 11 people making their way to the firing range to be shot dead. But things were different. The executioner there would not be an Axeman like it was in the Tudor period, but it would be a firing squad made up of British soldiers. Join us today as we look at the brutal World War I executions of the Tower of London. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. The Tower of London is remembered as a place of executions where a number of important Tudor figures and noble people were beheaded on the scaffold there. But despite being the place where the princes in the tower were murdered, and a place where kings and queens stayed for centuries, during the First World War, the tower had an important role to play in administering justice in Britain. The tower by the 1900s had become a popular tourist attraction, however it never ceased in its function as a garrison to house soldiers, as a prison to hold the most high-profile prisoners, and also as an execution site. As the war continued, the tower was still being used in its capacity, and it was even open to visitors during the conflict, despite being home to many prisoners. In fact, one of the most important roles the tower had was a base to train recruits from different groups, including the Royal Fusiliers. Within days of the announcement of war breaking out, many young men who worked close to the tower came there to enlist and to join the war effort. Many joined with their friends and work colleagues, and there were huge queues to enlist inside of the tower's moat. Many groups of soldiers were then mobilised to go and fight, and soldiers were garrisoned at the Tower of London and were then deployed to the front lines. Many different battalions passed through the tower, but as soon as war broke out, there was a real problem in Britain with spies. The fear and threat of spies and espionage was real inside of Britain, as its enemies sought to get intelligence, which would give them the heads up against the British. Many German spies were deployed to Britain, and many of them had been given hardly any training, before they were involved in carrying out espionage and acts of sabotage. Because of this, a large number were captured relatively easily. In 1915, the British Army headquarters for the London district wrote to the constable of the tower, and he said that as the tower had a rich history of execution, torture and imprisonment, that the fortress could play a pivotal role in the execution of spies. It was suggested that the tower would play a very important propaganda role for being the site where a number of German spies could be executed, as it was seen as the crown taking in the lives of the country's enemies, and the Tower of London's reputation was worldwide. Bringing this centuries-old fortress back into action with executing the most serious of criminals would be an interesting development in its story. In total, the Tower of London would take the lives of 11 enemy spies during the First World War. The first of these to be imprisoned at the tower and to be executed there was Karl Hans Lodi, a German naval officer. After the war broke out, he came to Britain and was involved in a network of spies that were sent to different parts of the country. He could speak very good English and maintained his disguise as an American. Lodi went to Scotland and was ordered to observe a group of warships anchored near a Royal Navy base close to Edinburgh. He was then to report back but when he was tried, he claimed that spy work made him uneasy, that he was not fit to be a spy. Interestingly also, he had previously worked on the Hamburg, America shipping line before World War I broke out, and was rather well known in international shipping circles. Lodi was one of these spies with no proper training, and quickly he was captured and his identity was confirmed before he was tried in London. He was placed on trial on the 20th of October 1914, and it was said he did not look like a dangerous spy. 
Many witnesses were brought to testify, including the owner of the boarding house where he was staying, and she could not even identify him well. He did not reveal who had sent him to England, but he was found guilty as an enemy spy and was sentenced to death. Loddy was at the Tower of London and was held within its walls in the Wellington Barracks before and after his trial. But after the death sentence was passed, the Major of the Tower of London was told to make quick and secret arrangements for the execution to take place within the walls of the medieval Tower of London. The War Office approved the Tower as the site of Loddy's execution and it was to be carried out on the 6th of November 1914. Whilst imprisoned inside the Wellington Barracks, he wrote home and stated, My dear ones, tomorrow I shall be shot here in the Tower. I have had just judges, and I shall die as an officer, not a spy. Farewell, God bless you. He also wrote to the commanding officer of his guards and thanked them for being kind and respectful whilst he was a prisoner. On the morning of his execution, he was taken from his cell by an officer and he said, I suppose you will not shake the hand of a German spy. His officer replied, No, but I will shake the hand of a brave man. The tower's chaplain, based in the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, the burial site of Anne Boleyn, Thomas Cromwell and many other high-profile executed people, then read the burial service and accompanied Karl Hans Loddy along with an armed guard to his site of execution. A yeoman warder or beefeater who saw Loddy's final walk stated, The chaplain in his nervousness made to turn left, which was the wrong way. Instantly, Loddy took a quick step forward, caught the chaplain by the right arm, and with a polite and kindly smile, gently guided him to the right, the correct way. A few moments later, the procession disappeared through the doorway of the sinister shed, and shortly after that came the muffled sounds of a single volley. Loddy had been taken into what was known as the Sinister Shed, a miniature firing range at the Tower of London, which was used to practice shooting by the soldiers' base there. This firing range was used to train those with different sights on rifles, but it became the site of execution. Today it still remains at the tower and is away from view, but this became the place of Loddy's execution and became the place where the final people executed at the Tower of London were killed. It is a short way away from the traditional site of execution Tower Green, where the Tudor queens were beheaded. But this small hut was where 11 spies would be executed by the firing squad. The executions all followed in the same manner as Loddy's. He was taken into the range and was then told to walk down to the end of the range where he was then secured to a chair and a blindfold was placed over his eyes. He could not move from the seat and then the firing squad were readied. Many had been given blanks as they would not know if the soldiers carrying out the execution were the ones who carried out the fatal shot. The firing squad then fired straight into the condemned and then the officer in charge would go and check along with the doctor that they had been killed. If not, a coup de grace would be administered. Carl Loddy was buried then in a common grave in a cemetery in East London. But Carl Hans Loddy was the first of 11 spies who were executed within the walls of the Tower of London. Those who were executed inside the firing range were Carl Frederick Muller, executed on the 23rd of June 1915, Heiker Petrus Marinus Janssen and Wilhelm Johannes Rus, executed on the 30th of July 1915, Ernst Waldemir Malin, executed on the 10th of September 1915, Augusto Alfredo Rogan, executed on the 17th of September 1915, Fernando Bushman, executed on the 19th of October 1915, George Traugott Bricklow, executed on the 26th of October 1915, Irving Gaius Rees, executed on the 27th of October 1915, Albert Meyer, executed on the 2nd of December 1915, and Ludovico Hervitz Yazenda, executed on the 11th of April 1916. All of those were executed in the same manner by firing squad, and all of them were convicted of spying for the enemy. The First World War executions at the Tower of London were the first to be conducted in 170 years there. But it wouldn't be the final executions that took place, as during the Second World War, there was one more German spy executed inside the firing range. Within the same walls that Henry VIII's wives lost their heads, the British would inflict brutal justice onto those spies who were found to be damaging the war effort. The Tower of London, which became a site of execution during the medieval period, was brought back into service in bloody fashion, and 11 times the firing squad base there shot through a convicted spy during the conflict. 
Most of these spies were poorly trained and were inadequate, but nonetheless were considered dangerous enemies during a conflict that changed the world. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.